welcome to another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, now, we had a, a sort of sad Sudoku that we did yesterday, um, which said Holleson created uh, on Kobe Bryant. And we were planning to do this puzzle, um, which is another puzzle by said, but on a rather, um, a rather more joyful theme. Um, this was to celebrate uh, Chinese New Year, which, which occurred at the weekend. Um, so, believe it or not, Sed has managed to create the Chinese symbol for the word year out of thermometers. So these are, you can see the thermometers in the grid, and I'm going to have a go at this puzzle uh, in a moment. Um, now, if you um, aren't sure about the rules of Thermo Sudoku, let me just remind you. So you can see that, let's use this one, this is a good example, it's very straight. Um, the thermometer has a bulb, the bulb must contain the lowest digit on the thermometer, and then as you move up the bowl up or up the thermometer, the numbers must strictly increase. Uh, that's all there is to it. Um, and this is certainly one of the most popular variants we cover on the channel, so I'm sure this will be a good puzzle uh, for those of you who enjoy variants. Um, as you can see, I'm on my laptop today. Um, should be back on the desktop very soon for those of you who don't like the sound or the video quality. Um, and if you want to have a go at the puzzle, just click on the link under the video and that will take you to this web page where you can play along. Now, let's have a look at this and think about how to do it. Now, just before we start, sometimes with a Sudoku, it is worth just taking a step back and staring at it and thinking about whether or not there is going to be a weak point in the logic of the puzzle, a place where we can attack the puzzle uh, most fruitfully. And here I suspect that the intersection of this thermometer and this thermometer must be restrictive. Now, why do I say that? Well, it's just a gut instinct. This thermometer obviously is quite a long thermometer, so I can see these three digits here are going to be, you know, they're going to be middling numbers. But similarly, if we look at this thermometer, it's not quite as long. But we can't have a 1 in the first position. So these three digits are also going to be middling numbers. So I'm expecting these five digits here to be quite restricted. And probably, in fact, why don't we just start there and see what see what we can see. So you can see this could be a 1 um, or a 2. Actually, it can't be a 3. Uh, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Interestingly, that can't be a 7 because of the 7 in the column. So that's going to have to be an 8 or a 9. This will have to be a 2 or a 4. Can't be a 3 for this reason. This square can be 3, 4. I think that could be a 5, but for this square here. This can be 4, 5, 6. This can be 5, 6, 7, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's that's that does look right, doesn't it? And then this one can be ah, this one has a seven, so this can only be six or eight. So as predicted, we have got some middling numbers in the box, but nothing very restricted yet. Let's check this one. So this one can be a two or a three. Look at that. The four here is nice. So this can't be a five. Um, so two, three, well, that can't be a three either. So the minimum value of this digit is 4, which is interesting. Uh, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so let's have a look at this then. This can be 4, 5. Uh, can that be 6? No, if this was 6, 7, 8, 9, that would run out of room. This can be 4 or 5. This can be 5 or 6, therefore. Yep, that's how that feels right to me. Um, five, six, seven here. Well, I'm not sure we need to go much further actually, because I've noticed something about the middle block. But let's just continue and have a think about this square. This can be six, seven, or eight. Now, let's just take a stare at this central box now, because our instinct has proved correct. We have a four, five, a five, six, and a four, five, six in three different boxes in that central three by three. So we know that those three digits must be the numbers 4, 5, and 6 in some order. Or those three cells must be the numbers 4, 5, and 6 in some order. So immediately, therefore, we know this square must be a 7. It can't be a 5 or a 6. This square 
must be a three. Oh, and that's very that's very nice indeed, isn't it? Because now if this is a three, this must be a two, this must be a one. And if this is a seven, this must be an eight, and this must be a nine, and this must be an eight, and this must be a nine. So we're certainly off and running. Um, ah, now the one here is nice. Where can we put a one in this three by three block? Remember, one of the best rules about thermo Sudoku is that the one can only go at the bulb of the thermometer. So this must be the one that places a one at the bottom. We can pencil mark some ones down in that bottom left hand side. We know there's a three in one of those three squares, and therefore there's a three in one of these three squares. And this could still be a three, three, four, five. That would then be a six. That that does look like it might work. Um, let's have a look at the rest of row six. We've got to put four, five, and six into those two squares. Look, this one can't be a six because of that one. That one can be anything. Okay. Right, so where is the next easy win? Let's have a think about this. Ah, now, in fact, that square is fascinating to me. Why? Because that can't be a 1, it can't be a 2, it can't be a 3. Now, it can't be a 5 either, so if we try and make this 6, it's too big. So, in fact, this square must be a 4. So, this can't be a 3 anymore. 6, 7, 8. So everything along here is highly restricted. Uh, 5, 6, 6, 7, and the 7 in column 6 tells us that this is in fact a 6. This is a 5. This must be a 7 or an 8. And it can't be an 8. And this must be an 8 because there's a 9 in the column. Lovely. Okay. Must be a four in one of these two squares. Ones are very restricted as well. Look at that one and this one interacting. And the fact that we can't place a one midway along a thermometer forces ones into those two squares and turns that into a one four pair. Okay, so what can we do with that? Now, also, if we have a look along here now, we need to put we need to put a 1 in this row, so that's only going to be able to go here. These two squares are going to have to be 3 and 9 in some order, but we can never put a 9 partially along the thermometer either, because there's no number bigger than a 9. So the 9 must go here, this must be a 3, now this can't be a 4, it needs to be lower than a 3, so that's a 1, this is a 4. We can lock 4s into one of those squares, tidy up the ones in the bottom left hand side. Uh, this must be a 1 as well. I think we've done the 1s now. Um, and we've, we've used most of the thermometers. Let's just have a quick stare at this. There must be a 7 in one of these two squares. And if we have a look at this central 3x3, three three, let's just revisit that for a moment. You can see we still need to place 2, 8 and 9. But this square can't possibly be an 8 or a 9 because it must be lower than a 4 or a 5. So that is 2, which locks a 2 into one of those squares. 2 into one of those two squares, creating a 2-3 pair at the top look. These two squares have got to be 8-9 in some order. Oh yes, now look, 8-9 there. 8, 9 there. So these two squares are also an 8, 9 pair. And you can see that therefore this square cannot be a 4. So the 4 is forced down to this position where it took the pencil marked 7. So that also gives us a 7 as well. And I suspect now we are starting to close in on the finishing steps. You can see this square must be a 5 or a 6. Oops, 5 or 6. Let's make sure I get that right. So we now need an 8 and a 9 to complete the column. Well, this has a 9 already here. So that's an 8. That's a 9. Must be a 9 down in the bottom right-hand side. 
There must be an 8 in one of those two squares. Uh, the 7 must go here because of the 7 in this square. Look, these two squares must be 5 and 6. Let's label those up and have another think. Seven here, four, eight. Ah, yes, eights. Eights are also nice because of these three eights. So that locks an eight here, where it took the pencil mark of a nine. I really admire um, Sed's ability to come up with these these very topical puzzles. I mean, yesterday's puzzle was tragic, but to produce a Sudoku based around it so quickly and so beautifully was really touching and this puzzle for Chinese New Year as well I mean it's you know it's incredibly current really we should have covered it uh, at the weekend but obviously with me tra traveling at the moment things are a bit up in the air um, so now you can see just been stepping through we've got to put two and three into these two squares and what shall we do next? So we're not going to get any help from this thermometer in that square there. Fours, fours, fives, fives, twos. Twos into one of those squares. Nine. Eight, nine here. Let's have a look at sixes. You can see that we need to be able to put a six into one of those two positions. And the 7 here and the 7 here mean that we need a 7 into one of those two squares. So these two squares are a 7, 8 pair as well. And that's going to allow us to write in a 9 into this square. Which fixes the 9s on the top right hand side and the 9s in the central cage. Look, And that fixes the 8 and the 7. And again, because we've been pencil marking diligently... We've discovered something now in this 3x3 three three block. If we look, actually we've got to be a bit careful because we've got three pencil mark 3s, which I don't often use. So we can't assume these are a 3-7 pair just yet. We still, need, we still need to pencil mark 4 down here as well. So when we play pencil mark the 4s, we've now got 3s, 4s and 7s all pencil marked into this column. So what does that tell us about the 6? Well, that must be here. Therefore, this is a 2. Uh, now, let's carry on with that and see if we can... So this is a 3 or a 4. This is a 2 or a 3. Where can we put a 4 now in row 9 of the grid? That's going to have to go into this square. These become a 3-7 pair. And there must be a four look in one of these two positions. Six, eight, six, eight. Let's have a look along here. We need four, five, and six. So, okay, so this square can never be a four, obviously, because then this square would have no value. So this has got to be a five or a six. And therefore, and this square has to be a 4 or a 5 because of the 6 below it. So that tells us that this is in fact 6, which gives us a 6 at the top, which locks the 6 and the 5 into position. Pencil mark 5's here. This square must be a 2 or a 3. We're nearly there. We just have to unwind this final thermometer interaction. Six, four, that would ah the four down here fixes it, doesn't it? That gives us a six, five, four. That fixes the five and the four over on this side. Now these squares oops uh, have got to be two and three. There's a lot of two three pairs you'll see <laughs> that are unresolved at this point. Six here. Uh, two, three, five, five, five. One of these two squares must be a five. 
The 5 here fixes the 5 into that square though. Let's put the 2 and 3 here. This 5 forces this square. This square now has to be a 3 because we can see from the row it's got to be a 3 or a 7. There's a 7 up there. So now that's 3, that's 7, this is 3. And that's going to finally allow us some headway into these 2 3 pairs. And look at the way these chain around the grid. Just gorgeous. Um, and finally, 4 7 into these two squares. Check. And that's how to do it. So thanks very much to Sed as usual. Happy Chinese New Year to those of you who celebrate that. And uh, we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.